point. They are all in there fighting, and the fight is for third, though they begin to spring out a bit now. Well, oh, oh, that was a little out. awfully bad. I, uh, I hope that wasn't as serious as it looked like. Going to the help of one of the drivers. You saw it happen live right there. No movement at that car. I believe that that is Kip Ganassi. There is the first crew there on the scene. Second crew there. Still trouble with visibility. We'll hesitate. We don't want to indicate anything until we see it and know it. You're looking at it as we are. Jr., Kip Ganassi, the two cars that are there. Visibility is terrible. Its report is that Allinger Jr. looks okay. Bobby, let's look at it again. They come onto the back track. Ganassi looks like he gets off the wall and collects little Al. Yes, he definitely broke something and just take little Al right down with him, but he obviously kept broke something on his car because the car just made an immediate turn. And they hit the road. I think, really, you've just seen the top of the car coming off. That's the yes, indication of the name. car flip. But that's the nasty one. As Ganassi hits the fence, catches the barrier, the car was in the air. looked like the top of the car slammed into the barrier. For Chip's car, it was a very bad wreck. It looks like little Al's car stayed right side up to the whole thing, as near as I can tell, Paul. This has been a nasty section of the Michigan Speedway course. We'll talk about that in a moment. See, he just turned. It, it, apparently something breaks. Al collects it. Yes, it did. There was no place for Al to go. And see, Chip has just continued going down and just holding little Al there. And there's nothing There's nothing either driver can do anything about. Watch this. This will give us an idea, too. Of it. That's just the top coming off the car. But as they get across that ditch, Chip gets high into the air and slams into the barrier, oscillates in the air. That's a bad accident, Paul. This is the same place Mike Kiss and Merle Bettenhausen, I believe, got together. Back in the same area of the track. Look at the debris screwing all over the race course. There's Chip Ganassi. Saw him last night. He said, hey, mention my name a bit more. I just got a second place. Let's hope that Chip is okay. We certainly didn't want to mention his name in this way as involved in an accident here in what appears to be a serious one at the Michigan 500. Al Unger Jr., who is also running up there in that wonderful battle at the top of the serial. There he is. He's been in one other accident this year at the Phoenix race, but for the most part, he tends to avoid accidents, and this one didn't seem that he had any choice at all. We'll look at it again. This is in regular speed. They come on the back stretch. Little Al didn't have any choice at he all. He saw it coming, Paul, and he even tried to turn to the left. He saw Kip coming, and he turned to the left to avoid it, but there's just no way. It was a total blockage. It looked, too, like there were three or four other guys that are probably still holding their breath as a result of that. There is uh, Derek Daly from Dublin, Ireland. His car stalled on the circuit. It looks to be ready to go. He just simply wants to get a tow and get that engine restarted. We are, of course, under the yellow. We have 150 laps complete under the yellow. Tom Steva is our leader. Our second place car is Bobby Rahal. Poncho Carter is now third. Gordon Johncock is fourth. Rick Mears sixth in sixth place and seventh is A.J. Foyt. Roberto Guerrero behind him. Eighth is Kevin Kogan. Ninth, Mario Andretti. And Danny Angaius is in tenth. We're under yellow. We'll be back with more and hopefully an update on the information on this accident at the Michigan 500. This is Paul Page with Bobby Unger, Gary Gerald, Bruce Jenner. We are back under yellow, the Michigan 500, in that ambulance, Chip Ganassi, one of the two involved in an accident on the backstretch. A tremendous accident. The cars, chips at least, way up in the air. But the indications were, here's Al Unger Jr. Now, he's been talking with his rescuers. He's been spending plenty of time with them. And he appears to be all right, certainly not life-threatened. There you see, he's even slightly argumentative. He, He's correct in his own rescue operation. Uh, the indications are that he has uh, possibly a leg injury, and he is talking, obviously, in some discomfort. Looks like they have his left leg totally splinted there. So um, Allinger Jr. being loaded into the ambulance. 
There's one of the machines, Al Unger Jr.'s. You can see again the tremendous forces that these cars take, and yet that carbon fiber cockpit tends to protect them. This was uh, Chip Ganassi's ambulance just a few moments ago as they loaded him on board. He appeared to be the more serious of the two cars involved because it got in the air, as you can see, he's he moving as well. And so hopefully, very shortly, we will be able to give you a good report on both of these drivers. We'll wait, of course, for the facts and the report from the doctors. Now, we're back live once again, and you're looking over at the track hospital. This is Chip Ganassi's ambulance. All the care in the world, and there is plenty of expert care here available to him. Dr. David Crippen is the man, or that looks like Steve Alvey, the man in the uh, blue uh, fireproof uniform. He is the regular cart physician. He's right there with him. They use uh, two or three regular doctors today at Steve Alvey and David Crippen. They use them in part because they know the drivers so well and the drivers trust them. So into the hospital goes Chip Ganassi. There is his car, the number 40 machine. They now have it on the other side of the barrier. That's not where it came to originally. It stayed out on the outside of the barrier. They've moved it over there. The engine is completely torn away, Bobby. Not much left of that car, Paul. I, I just think it's amazing that we saw Chip move, and we know the little Al's definitely moving, and it's just amazing that they can have wrecks. That's how far safety has gone, have wrecks of such a magnitude and yet the drivers uh, come out as good as they do. I, I know some things go wrong sometimes, but that's more than amazing. Racing has come a long way. This is uh, certainly Chip Ganassi's most serious accident, his first big one. Also the first one for uh, Al Unser Jr. in IndyCar racing. And here is Peter Halsmer. The car belongs to Dan Gurney. They have been constantly in the fight here today, though running off the leader's serial. There is Dan Gurney on the outside of the wall, and he seems happy with the performance of his young driver. Dan Gurney is a remarkable man in IndyCar racing, and his effort is one that he hopes does very well. Here's his story. Racing machinery from the United Man this afternoon, he's held that yellow much more than he likes to. Bobby, you just heard a bit of an update. Well, it, it looks like, uh, we don't know everything so far, but it looks like Al Jr.'s got a left leg that's probably broken, and uh, that, that isn't serious compared, believe me, and uh, it's going to be all right, so it sounds like, and we don't know about Chip at the moment. Still waiting for a report then on Chip Ganassi. We are still under the yellow. Tom Sneva is our leader, Ray Hall second, Carter third, John Cock fourth. We'll be back. This is Paul Page. We are back live at the Michigan 500. 159 laps are complete. We are under yellow as a result of that accident that you saw involving Chip Ganassi and Al Unger Jr. The current order under the yellow, Sneva, Ray Hall, Carter, John Cox, then Rick Mears, Roberto Guerrero, Kevin Cogan, Mario Andretti, A.J. Foyt, and Danny Sullivan. There's a great deal more racing left to go on the IndyCar PPG Series this